AEW All Out 2024 will go down in the history books as AEW's most violent event that they have ever hosted. And I'm not even just talking about the main event. I'm also talking about the co-main event. You won't believe what they did in the co-main event. More on that in a minute. Let's talk about why you clicked on this video. Swerve Strickland, Hangman Page, they closed the show. You thought that their previous match could not be topped. Well, they in fact topped it. They used chairs. They used cinder blocks, tables, and even a needle. So let's cover this main event before we get into the just outrageous co-main event. So we knew this was going to be a violent, unsanctioned street fight in a steel cage match, essentially what it was, right? They used everything known to man, including a needle. Hangman and Page ripped the grill out of Swerve Strickland's mouth and used a needle and used it in his mouth before hitting a chair shot to the head, which sounded sickening to score the win. That was a... It was an insane main event. JR was absolutely appalled during the show when he called the last two matches. Now let's... Let's run through the rest of the show, and then we'll get to the outrageous co-main event. Uh, Pre-show was nothing special. You could have skipped the entire pre-show. They claimed they went over the Iron Savages, and if you're asking yourself, who are the Iron Savages, you're not a lot. They worked on ROH and Rampage and stuff. Dustin Rhodes, Sammy Guevara, Hologram, they went over the Premier Athletes. You had Dark Order. They put over the Bang Bang Gang, and Bang Bang Gang, they look pretty good as always. Then the final zero hour pre show match, you had Top Flight and Action Andrade taking on Shane Taylor and Lee Moriarty and The Beast. And Undisputed Kingdom went over in this match. All right, enough with that. Let's get into the meat and potatoes. So, Daniel Garcia, MJF, they opened the show. In my opinion, they had the second best pure wrestling match because you can't count the street fight. You can't count, I guess you could count the main event, but I didn't, or or the the co-main event with Brian Danielson. But eh, I wasn't very high on that match. Hangman Page, Swerve Strickland, that was an outlier. Will Ospreay, Pac was the best match on the show. Daniel Garcia, MJF, it was dang close. Back and forth, back and forth, Garcia sold his neck and his head. In the end, though, he went over, well, he put over MJF, because MJF hit a low blow as the referee didn't see him, and then hit the jackknife for the win. Now, after the match, Daniel Garcia shook MJF's hand, yet laid him out with the pile driver. So it looks like MJF is going to be taking some time off. AEW Tag Team Champions, Young Bucks, put the titles on the line against Claudio Castanoli. And Wheeler Uter. It was a fun match, but I thought it overstayed it its welcome. I just thought they went way too long. In the end, though, it was Yuta going for a splash, but he ate the double knees by Matt and rolled him up for the win. Now let's get to the best match on the show. Will Ospreay, Pac. Instant freaking classic. Dave Meltzer is going to give this a 10-star rating. He's going to love this match. It was phenomenal. If you go out of your way to see anything, this would be it. This is the definition of pro wrestling in 2024. Will Ospreay is hands down and not even close the best wrestler in the world. And Pac can go and put on a banger against any single person on the planet. In the end, though, uh, it was Will Ospreay hitting the Styles Clash and then the Hidden Blade for the win to retain the International Championship. Up Nats was a match that was honestly, it was a sleeper for me, but it went hard in the paint. It was a Chicago street fight, Willow Nightingale, Chris Statlander. These women absolutely crushed. They used light tubes. Willow hit it with light tubes at one point. They did a, a spear spot off the stage through a set of tables. Chris, she bladed. They used thumbtacks, including... Chris going for a, uh, a leg scissors kick, but she landed and did the splits into tax. Then they did a little dog collar spot. In the end, though, it was Chris Statlander going over with the tombstone. 
and uh, or excuse me, Chris Statlander went over. She hit a tombstone. Then she choked out Willow Nightingale with a chain to get the win. Then we had a fatal four-way match. This match was just there. This match I didn't really care for. AEW Continental Champion Okada, Mark Briscoe, Orange Cassidy, Takeshita. It was just there. It was fine. It was great. Well, it wasn't great, but it was fine. It was just there. In the end, though, Okada went over Cassidy with the Rainmaker. Mercedes Monet, Akara Shida, TBS Championship. Camille was banned from ringside. Eh, it was, it was a good match. It, it was there. It, it didn't feel anything like it was special. Not ran at the end of. This was kind of the dead period of the show. We had the Fatal Four Way that was kind of dead. This match was kind of dead. It was just there. Um, in the end, though, it was Monet going over with the Money Maker. It was there. Come in event time. This is something, obviously, I've been hyping up throughout the whole show. Brian Danielson. Or, excuse me. Yeah, Brian Danielson, AEW World Heavyweight Champion, putting the title on the line against Jack Perry. It was a good match. They worked hard. Uh, they had to get the crowd into it. It kind of started off slow and kind of sluggish. But they found their groove down the stretch. It was good. In the end, though, Brian, he had a, a series of head kicks and then a running knee strike for the win. After the match, this is where things get interesting because Kill Switch came out and laid out Brian Danielson. He had a stare down with Jack Perry. Obviously, they have ties early in AEW's tenure. Then Christian Cage comes out. Now, if you recall it all in, he won the Casino Gauntlet match, earning him a shot at a World Heavyweight title match anytime he wants. Well, he was going to cash in on that. Then we saw Blackpool Combat Club come out. John Monsley, Wheeler Yuta, even Pac, and Claudio. And then Claudio caught Brian with an uppercut. And Brian didn't even sell it. He just fell and he was in shock. Wheeler Yuta was held back by Pac as John Monsley put a plastic bag over Brian Danielson's head and choked him. It was a Terry Funk esque like angle in which Eddie Kingston wanted to do earlier this year with his feud with Chris Jericho. Tony Khan did not sign off on that then, but John Motsley, who he views very highly, and obviously Brian Danielson, who he views very highly, they they got away with it, and they did it. And JR was losing his mind on this, and I don't know, like, he was supposed to be outraged and, apl- and you know, just, completely losing his mind over this, but I think he was legitimately appalled by this angle. I don't think he liked it at all because he's 